Good morning. Thank you for joining with me. Today we are on day 14, reading in the text of A Course in Miracles. We're reading the edition, Foundation for Inner Peace. And we will start with a prayer and a meditation. If you would like to close your eyes and join me. Dear Father, if left to my own devices, my perception will be skewed. I surrender to you everything that I think and feel. Please take my past, plan my future, send your spirit to redeem my mind that I might be set free. May I be your channel, God, and serve the world. May I become who you would have me be, do what you would have me do, go where you would have me go, and say what you would have me say, and to whom. Dear Father, please enable me to set aside everything that I think I know for an open mind and a new experience in all things today. And so it is. Amen. So now let's start our meditation. Let's go ahead and start with the breath. In for two and out for four three times. And now we'll do the three X breath in for a count of three, out for a count of six. And now let's do our 4x breath in for a count of 4. Hold it at the top and exhale for a count of 8. And again, we'll do this three times. Now let's come to our senses. Go ahead and feel what you feel in your body. Any tension, aches, pains, sensations on your skin. Just notice what you feel in your body. Then taste what you taste. What is it that you taste? And then hear what you hear. What do you hear closest to you and what do you hear furthest away? What do you hear? With your eyes closed, see what you see through your eyelids, any light patterns. And lastly, with a big 4x breath in through the nose, out 
through the mouth for a count of eight. Go ahead and smell what you smell. And now let's go ahead and move into our silent meditation. I will decrease the volume so that it's quiet. Hold on to the mantra. You may use the lesson for today. Lesson 14, God did not create a meaningless world. God did not create a meaningless world. Or use the mantra of your choice. God did not create a meaningless world.
God did not create a meaningless world. Go ahead and think of three things that you are grateful for. And now let's go ahead and feel the center of our chest light up in a pure light, in the purest light that you can imagine. I always imagine my pure light to be with a blue, blue tint, so white it's blue. And then, uh, See this light extend out into the world. Feel it go from within you to anyone in the room, any living thing in the room, then any living thing in your home. See it extend out into your neighborhood, out across, across the country into your town, any countryside there may be. Go ahead and see this light extend further and further and further until it can extend no more because it's covering the entire globe. Just feel this light center extend out. Feel it vibrate across the globe in love and kindness. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes or you can just listen to me read. And I am going to move into another room because of my talks. I apologize. Chapter 2, The Separation and the Atonement, Section 4. Healing as a release from fear. Our emphasis is now on healing. The miracle is the means, the atonement is the principle, and healing is the result. To speak of a miracle of healing is to combine two orders of reality inappropriately. Healing is not a miracle. The atonement or the final miracle is a remedy and any type of healing is a result. The kind of error to which atonement is applied is irrelevant. All healing is essentially the release from fear. To undertake this, you cannot be fearful yourself. You do not understand healing because of your own fear. A major step in the atonement plan is to undo error at all levels. Sickness or not right-mindedness is the result of level confusion because it always entails the belief that what is amiss on one level can adversely affect another. We have referred to miracles as the means of correcting level confusion for all mistakes must be corrected at the level on which they occur. Only the mind is capable of error. The body can act wrongly only when it is responding to misthought. The body cannot create, and the belief that it can, a fundamental error produces all physical symptoms. Physical illness represents a belief in magic. The whole distortion that made magic rests on the belief that there is a creative ability in matter which the mind cannot control. This error can take two forms. It can be believed that the mind can miscreate in the body or that the body can miscreate in the mind. When it is understood that the mind, the only level of creation, cannot create beyond itself, neither type of confusion need occur. Only the mind can create because spirit has already been created and the body is a learning device for the mind. Learning devices are not lessons in themselves. Their purpose is merely to facilitate learning. 
The worst a faulty use of learning device can do is to fail to facilitate learning. It has no power in itself to introduce actual learning errors. The body, if properly understood, shares the invulnerability of the atonement to two-edged application. This is not because the body is a miracle, but because it is not inherently open to misinterpretation. The body is merely a part of your experience in the physical world. Its abilities can be, and frequently are, over-evaluated. However, it is almost impossible to deny its existence in this world. Those who do so are engaging in a particularly unworthy form of denial. The term unworthy here implies only that it is not necessary to protect the mind by denying the unmindful. If one denies this unfortunate aspect of the mind's power, one is also denying the power itself. All material means that you accept as remedies for bodily ills are restatements of magic principles. This is the first step in believing that the body makes its own illness. It is a second misstep to attempt to heal it through non-creative agents. It does not follow, however, that the use of such agents for corrective purpose, purposes is evil. Sometimes the illness has a sufficiently strong hold over the mind to render a person temporarily inaccessible to the atonement. In this case, it may be wise to utilize a compromise approach to mind and body in which something from the outside is temporarily given healing belief. This is because the last thing that can help the non-right-minded or the sick is an increase in fear. They are already in a fear-weakened state. If they are prematurely exposed to a miracle, they may be pre precipitated into panic. This is likely to occur when upside-down perception has induced the belief that miracles are frightening. The value of the atonement does not lie in the manner in which it is expressed. In fact, if it is used truly, it will inevitably be expressed in whatever way is most helpful to the receiver. This means that a miracle to attain its full efficacy must be expressed in a language that the recipient can understand without fear. This does not necessarily mean that this is the highest level of communication of which he is capable. It does mean, however, that it is the highest level of communication of which he is capable now. The whole aim of the miracle is to raise the level of communication, not to lower it by increasing fear. I thank you so much for joining me in Chapter 2, The Separation and the Atonement. This is Section 4, and tomorrow we will start Section 5. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for joining with me.